Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott, and I am here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good evening, sir. How are you, Scott? Doing great. I heard a little birdie say that uh, my introduction is pretty repetitive, but I like consistency. We've been pretty good about recording on Tuesday (laughs) evenings. The energy is good. The mind is clear. Uh, It's just been amazing uh, after, you know, the last challenge that we did and the feedback we've been getting. So super excited about tonight. Yeah, me too. Me too. We're going to go over some good stuff. Um, Got some good feedback uh, from everybody. Got some responses in some reviews and uh, some direct questions that uh we're gonna start addressing them tonight so i'm excited Perfect. yeah dangle dangle a little uh little tidbit there i like it mm-hmm. um it's called the tease i believe in the radio industry which i'm not part of mm-hmm. so recap from last week um we talked about the industry of tracking steps and calories and calorie counting and the ten thousand steps to nowhere study that doesn't really exist and Just all of these different things that I don't find to be enjoyable long term that are great for a 30 day challenge, but not great for consistency over time. So, yeah, um, we just spelled a lot of things there. Uh, Hopefully there was some encouragement in it also. And then the easiest way to exercise, which I actually heard from a couple of people um, that they're already doing this, you know, kind of 15 to 20 minute thing every every day with just resistance bands or just body weight. And they've seen better results with this than. Um, in the past with gym memberships and trainers and all that kind of thing. So pretty cool. I believe it. So, so much more motivating too. It's so much, I mean, you think about what you get into with a new year's resolution, you start, you know, uh, you go in, you buy a whole bunch of equipment, you start going to the gym, you put a lot of time into it, you come back and then you're still not getting the results and you're not sure why. And you've put a lot of time and money into it. Of of course, that's going to be frustrating. Whereas minimal, preparation and money and you start getting results uh, that's extremely motivating simplicity and control simplicity and control simplicity Mm -hmm. and control you know so definitely you know when we started out on this with the four the you know the mindset the motivation the method and the mastery you know we wanted to deliver on a promise of simplification and giving back control to the individual which we've been able to do too Mm -hmm. and it's just it's amazing and every topic and every um, different situation. It's, it's just like those two things just keep jumping out at me. So yeah, I'm gonna ride that wave for as long as possible. We also had a great feedback from um, last week. We went over all the te- a bunch of testimonials from the challenge that we did. The 2020 uh, vision challenge was a seven day fasting challenge and uh, just amazing feedback. You can go to the at the fasting for life um, Facebook page. You can see a lot of those uh, testimonies there, I believe. Tommy's giving me a look like that may, mm-hmm. they may not be there. I hope they're there. We started posting No, we have a few them. there, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, more to come. Yep, absolutely. And then um, we've got a couple of direct questions, like Tommy said, so we're going to go over those tonight also. Um, the main topic for tonight's episode, though, is going to be the topic of growth hormone. Which was what... a question. <laughs> that question. Good segue. And a, um, why, it's, uh, why fasting is a great way to boost it and how important it is in the relationship to insulin. Um, So we're going to get into that and kind of dispelling some of the, oh, it's my thyroid. Oh, it's my age. Oh, it's um, my estrogen levels, menopausal time period of life. Oh, it's my low T. Oh, it's my cortisol. Well, let's start with the two main players, which is growth hormone and insulin. So that's what we're going to go in. They are really like physiological nemeses. And that's why when we got this question, we said, yes, this is the one. This is the one we have to address tonight. Um, you know, less than 10 episodes in, we have to, we have to go uh, here. We have to go down this road. Um, 
growth hormone is often called the anti-insulin. So we need to talk about it because we, we talk about how insulin is the main culprit um, for weight gain over time, for insulin resistance, for diabetes, and a host of other health concerns. Growth hormone is the anti-insulin. Perfect way to put it. Um, and when we really look at it, we want to come at it from a conceptual standpoint. And um, one of the studies that we were looking at, and I, I appreciate your um, willingness to go back into the pathophysiology textbooks and to make sure that the pathways that we're looking at are real. Um, and not just that they're real, like growth hormone's a real thing, but that there's a relationship there. And one of the studies that we were, we were kind of digesting was from 1988. And it was so powerful in that the, and so what are we talking? 30 years old, right? 30. I'm not good mm -hmm. with calendars, but yeah, 30, 30 plus 32. years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's looking at the relationship of growth hormone on day one of fasting compared to day five and relating that back to as you said it's arch nemesis which is insulin in the body they act antagonistically and there's other pathways involved but there are two main players in metabolism also so it's it's just interesting to look at that there's so much of a boost when you fast and it, it's it has so many more positive things going on than before than I could even realize. Like I was like, Oh yeah, your growth hormone goes up. That's a good thing. You know, you get a metabolism boost by day three, 15% uh, mm -hmm. by day three, blah, blah, blah. And I just keep, you know, spitting that out. And then I forget, I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. Let's dive into this a little bit more and kind of, you know, don't go too science nerdy, but like, okay, why is this important if we're going to be fasting? Like where is the maximum benefit and how do we get the best simplistic result? Right. Well, you want to start with the basics um, as far as why growth hormone matters? Sure. Or do you, okay. Yeah. So, so let's just talk about the basics for a minute. Um, so growth hormone is a protein and it is made and released from the pituitary gland, uh, which is deep in the brain. Okay. So we're talking about in, in the central part of the nervous system here, controlling all outer lying functions in the body, all right, uh, especially growth and metabolism, okay? So growth hormone is the main controller of growth and metabolism. So if we can affect it or if we do something to affect it, it's going to have major consequences in our body and in our day-to-day -day lives, okay? So it has a couple of different kinds of effects, um, but one of the main direct effects where growth hormone actually circulates through the body and acts directly on a cell is with regard to fat cells. Um, so fat cells have hormone receptors for growth hormone, and it will stimulate them to break down the fats inside of those cells and also suppresses their ability to accumulate more fat. So it literally flips a switch on the fat cells to turn them on and get them to start burning and releasing the fat that's stored inside. And that's a perfect application to real life. So when your growth hormone is at its highest, which is typically in a lower insulin state. So let's say in the morning, if mm -hmm. your, if your other hormones are not a lot of whack, but in regards to these two, your growth hormone is higher in the morning so your body is breaking down fat molecules or it's causing your liver because short term 12 to 24 hours, it's causing your liver to actually uh, clear out its short term glucose stores. So you're getting that energy source there as well, which then accelerates into at the same time because it's kind of like almost like a transition. It can't just be like on and off. Mm -hmm. So that's happening while the growth hormone is acting on those fat cells and causing them to break down, which then gives your body energy. So yeah, in so the you're, morning, you're not as hungry. Go ahead. Yeah. So you're talking about while we switch over from sugar metabolism, burn through the glycogen stores that we have over those first maybe 24, 36 hours or so. And then as we get into ketosis, right? Yeah. But even just in the morning when your growth hormone's at its highest, 
it's, yeah. it's, it's having these physiological effects on the body. So yes, you're mm-hmm. going to be less hungry. You're going to be more satiated. <clears throat> and I think you had a good example in kids to prove the point um, about yeah. kids going through growth spurts, right? Yeah. I mean, um, so kids, if you guys notice, if you have kids or if you've been around them, um, sometimes they'll become really, really picky eaters or they'll go through these times where they're really not hungry or they're, they're not eating per their normal schedule. Um, and it's usually around a, a, a heavy growth spurt. So a lot of times what you'll see is they'll pile on calories maybe for a few days um, where you say, wow, they just eat everything in sight. And then all of a sudden they just kind of stop. Um, it's like the, the appetite goes down, pickiness uh, of food goes up and all of a sudden um, they're just, they might only eat one big meal a day um, instead of throughout the day, like normal, or like you, you just got uh, through noticing, well, in the body that, that stop, um, that, that cessation of, of eating and, and shifting over to just a, a bigger meal and less frequent uh, frequency triggers the release of growth hormone in the body. That is the definition of a growth spurt uh, for, for a child. And it's interesting because like I'll notice and it took me a while until I started doing this myself. I'd be like, man, I was making my daughter's lunch and she was crushing it. And then all of a sudden she wasn't touching it. And then all of a sudden she wasn't eating breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? She used to love this. And then she didn't really like it anymore. And then next thing we know her, you know, footy pajamas don't fit. And I'm like, ah, gosh. And then like she goes through a month or two or three of like just massive consumption. Like she just wants to eat all the time. So it's Mm -hmm. like, we just blow through watermelons and fresh fruit and we've got healthy homemade snacks. It just, it's just like, like she sat down one night and ate, um, coconut oil chips, like these natural chips that only have three ingredients, coconut oil, potatoes, and sea salt, and an Mm -hmm. entire medium sized container of, um, avocado spread. So like an organic guacamole, like, and just sat there and crushed the entire thing. And then she, you know, so if you look back, it makes sense. Um, You know, she's, her body is, um, you know, building up energy stores and then burning them off uh, when the growth hormone goes up. So natural cycles, the body knows what it's doing and we just need to get out of the way. So one of the biggest (sighs) frustrations um, of being in practice and doing all these metabolic coaching sessions and challenges and nutritional consults on day one, day 12, day 30, day 90, they always came back to this conversation of, well, it's my metabolism, it's my thyroid, it's my stress, my cortisol, it's my estrogen levels, you know, Mm -hmm. approaching menopause, it's my low T. Well, guess what? Probably low on vitamin B. Yeah, yeah, there's a good one. Outside Mm -hmm. of the estrogen issue, as I am male, um, I had checked all of those pathways because I thought it was my cortisol and my adrenals. And I thought it was my thyroid and I thought it was my testosterone and I thought it was my gut. And then it came back to it being my, my, my liver and phase two liver, which, and insulin, which was showing up normal in my blood sugar test. So the growth hormone component of this is just massively important because it is the opposite, just in generality speaking here, it acts opposite of insulin. So the best Mm -hmm. way to spike your growth hormone and the best way to boost your metabolism um, in your metabolic rate, I should say, I don't like the term metabolism, but your metabolic rate is um, through increasing your, your, or utilizing your lean muscle or your fat, excuse me, your fat free mass or your Mm -hmm. muscle mass in your body which is where most of the energy in terms of your metabolic rate comes from. So to make this really simple, because I just went down a rabbit hole and confused myself, is using growth hormone to your advantage by decreasing insulin as often as possible, then allows your body to have a boost in your, in your overall metabolic rate, because that's where the majority of the energy is used when you have higher growth hormone levels. Tommy, did that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes, it makes perfect sense. And okay. before we tell you guys how much fasting can boost your growth hormone levels, because I'm sure at this point you're wondering, okay, growth hormone sounds great, but how much does it go up while I'm fasting? Stay tuned, okay? A couple more benefits of growth hormone, and we'll get to that, I promise. Uh, 
So growth hormone has another type of effect. It's called an indirect effect through another protein hormone we'll call IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. So the reason why I'm going to mention it is because it's a key player in muscle growth, okay? This is acting on the muscles to stimulate amino acids, bring them into the muscles, and turn them into actual proteins, protein synthesis, okay? So higher growth hormone levels means more muscle growth, protein synthesis, and that's what we want. That's that fat-free mass. That's what's helping to control our metabolic rate, right? And better body composition. So you have higher visceral fat, higher, uh, you know, centrally located fat. Um, you don't, you're not diagnosed with diabetes, but you do have some signs of insulin resistance. Um, well, guess what? Your risk of cardiovascular disease and obesity and comorbidities, you know, other conditions that you might have related to insulin resistance just went up. So you're literally having a long-term negative effect on your overall health profile, which is not what we want. So if we can stimulate this process, like Tommy's talking about, that IGF-1, as well as that amino acid and protein synthesis, which is muscle building, then why wouldn't we be doing this? So can I tell them the number? Because I really want to. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're ready. <laughs> Okay. Let's I love it. this let's new Tommy, it. Tommy, let's like dropping it. teases throughout. Cause I'm just like, boom, let's get to it. <laughs> so the study from 88 is it's crazy. So on the first day, um, you know, in that 24 hour, um, time frame, there is a fourfold increase of growth hormone. So four times just in that first day. Wow. So day five is 10 times. 10 times, 10 times. So we're talking 10 times on day ten five, times. 10 times. It's fun to say wow. 10 times, 10 times. So it's just amazing because now we're definitely switched from glucose, sugar burning into fat burning, which is what we want to increase mm -hmm. all health metrics and make us feel and look better and fit into those old genes again. Like all the positive stuff is coming from this because we are now just going directly to those fat molecules and going like, okay, break down, give me energy, break down, give me energy, break down, give me energy. Yeah. So Which we have power, hundreds of thousands of calories. Worth yeah, of. The, the power in the longer fast, the extended fast for increased health and rapid weight loss is not a negative. The study also shows that it actually, another benefit of this is it promotes and protects um, your, uh, your protein. It, it spares your body's protein. So one of the things we hear is, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, well, I'm going to go into starvation mode. I'm going to break down muscle. Well, no, the you're not. Man. Yeah, no, because your body has a, almost said a bad word, mechanism in it to protect, told you I was going to get fired up tonight, to protect yeah. itself because the body always wants to go back to balance. There's TH1 and TH2 immune systems. There's systolic and diastolic blood pressure. There's so many things in the body that are balanced, uh, growth hormone and insulin. Yes, they're mm -hmm. not directly like, you know, no other players involved, but they operate opposite of one another. So mm -hmm. it's just awesome to look at this and be like, okay, well, <clears throat> I guess I could like last week, you know, put on my little tracker on my wrist and count my calories and do my macros and stuff. Yeah, that's great. That works for a small percentage of people, but guess what that is to me? That's a living hell. Like mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. just <laughs> awful. Like, oh my gosh, like, I just want nothing to do with it. So sounds I'm going like to get 10, off. thousand steps to nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds, if you haven't listened to last week's episode eight, we are now in episode nine, go back and listen to it. Um, that's a plug for last week's podcast. Yeah. Um, and also leave us a five-star review and leave a question just like this one. You guys talk a lot about growth hormone, but what does it actually mean? So hopefully. Yeah. Great question. Um, yeah, it was Part a great question. David, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. So um, I'm going to get off my little rant box over here and, and pass it back over. I love the rant box. Um, so speaking of plugs for previous episodes, if you guys didn't listen to the one on sleep, check this out. One of my favorite things that growth hormone does, its most intense period of release is shortly after the onset of deep sleep. Okay. So if you guys go back to your, your sleep lessons, when we go, when we start to go into deep sleep, that's what correlates with all of that refreshing um, capabilities that sleep has. So we can get 
um, nine hours of sleep. But if we didn't hit much as far as deep sleep, it's not going to feel like nine hours of sleep. Um, whereas if we got six, six and a half, and we got into a lot of deep sleep, more than the nine, it's going to feel a lot better. And those, those growth hormone levels, like Scott was talking about, they are highest, um, you know, after we, after we wake, um, just our natural cycle, which I think has a lot to do with the fact that we are fasting overnight. Um, they are going to be even higher uh, with more deep sleep. They're, they're highest right after the onset of deep sleep. So make sure you're getting good sleep. And if you need a lesson on that, go check out a, a couple episodes ago. Yeah, I can't keep track of the episodes, Tommy. I'm terrible with stuff nah, like yeah. that. So, okay. Um, we talked about sleep, but we yeah. slept since then. So that's <laughs> just, fine. Yeah, just, just look for the one that says sleep. Yeah. Um, so, I was going to change gears, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back. So, before you or whoever's listening and before you did what I did, which is do years of tracking and just everything possible, um, mm -hmm. And people are telling me, well, you must be missing something. I'm like, well, yeah, I am. Yeah, I know. I'm getting heavier and I feel worse every year. Yeah, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, the stubbornness kicks in of I'm a provider and I've helped so many other people get results. And, you know, I know what I'm talking, you know, I feel confident in my knowledge base after so many years of studying this stuff and whatnot. And by no means, you know, are we pulling research articles out and saying, okay, we are the end all be all experts on it. But the life application is the most important thing to me. So mm -hmm. before you hop on thyroid medication or before you, um, you know, really dive into cortisol levels and thinking and blaming your stress and before you, you know, you know, start taking bioidentical hormones or T injections or pellets in, in the backside hormone pellets, like let's, try this first <laughs> and this mm -hmm. is going to be today I, I just had this moment of realization sitting here the the people that get good results with with what we've been doing so far are doing uh you know an intermittent with some you know longer fast here or there 24 36 72 but the people yeah. that are getting like crazy results are the one meal a day plus people the 24 hour mark and the growth mm -hmm. hormone is four times the level that it normally is at that 24 hour mark. So if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, where do I start? Um, I would start, I would start with an 18 hour eating window, right? Excuse me. I always mess that up. Um, <laughs> Six 16, hour eating window. yeah, okay. 16, eight, 16, which eight, is okay. typical intermittent fasting, you know, starting point. If you just Google fasting, that'll, you'll probably see, a 16, so 16, eight window. 16 hours fasted, eight yep. hours eating window. Okay. So eat between 12 and eight, right? So I would say probably start with a six hour window. So don't eat breakfast, push your lunch till two and then eat dinner, you know, stop eating by eight. Mm -hmm. But really if the, the goal would be to get to 24 hours as quickly as possible, you now know that your body's not going to break down muscle. It has mechanisms to protect that. You know, you're going to get the benefits of growth hormone which is what every guy in the gym wants, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, and not to just make it stereotypically male, but like it, it's good for women too. Like absolutely hundred sure. percent. Lots of females taking growth hormone and you know, um, lots of anti-aging clinics prescribing yeah, it, yeah. over prescribing it, you know. We want to look good and feel good. So men, women, whatever, just eat, start here before you start doing all that other stuff. Cause I've tried a lot of it um, outside of, you know, medications and injections and stuff. I've tried to do this stuff naturally and it wasn't the problem. The problem was insulin. So, um, yeah. yeah, I know, I know you have a, a story here, Tommy, that you want to get in. Um, yeah, you know, well, you, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned one meal a day and getting there. Um, and so I wanted to uh, just kind of give an update. Um, so you can see my wife, Jen on the website, if you go to the fasting for And, um, you know, she's one of the testimonials there. So, She's been fasting. Let's see. I, I started around February of last year. So I think by May um, she started and, and she pretty much, she, tr she tried some longer, some 48 and some 72 hour fast, but that wasn't really her thing, but she didn't have that much to lose. She just had some baby weight. Um, I think she was basically at like around 40 pounds, 40, 45 that she wanted to lose. And so she quickly settled in to a one meal a day routine with a couple of 48s here and there. Um, and then, um, yeah, she pretty much just stuck with one meal a day. And then that one meal, she didn't restrict it too much. 
Um, but she did focus on good vegetables and minimizing processed carbs. Um, you know, she had some pizza here and there and, um, you know, a hamburger here and there and, and things like that. So she wasn't, she wasn't like a hundred percent strict, but she was, she was good with those meals, plenty of salads, um, you know, intuitive eating almost like just, yeah. Yeah. Focusing on whole foods and, yeah. and, you know, just keeping it, keeping it clean most of the time. And, um, and so she, she was, was just kind of melting off those pounds, just, uh, you know, a couple pounds a week at a good rate. Um, just consistently felt fantastic. And she was hesitant from the beginning because I was jumping into longer fast right from the beginning. And, and, um, you know, she was just worried about starvation mode and, and just the, 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 the same stuff that we always talk about. And, um, uh, she feels fantastic and she's pretty much at her goal weight, um, now. So she, does one meal a day uh, during the week and two meals a day during the weekend. That is her maintenance plan. So um, just a little update on her. That's awesome. Um, I thought you were going to go with the other, other one that you had. So I was like, I was excited that you were telling that one because I didn't didn't, another time. Yeah. I didn't know the most recent update. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's, that's so great. We're going to talk more about that too. So um, in all transparency to wrap up the episode, a little peek behind the curtain here. Um, cause I wasn't keeping track of the time <laughs> or typically mm-hmm. I am. Um, so we're going to wrap up this week and we're going to ask you to do, um, keep the conversation going. So we really want more questions cause we didn't realize that the growth hormone question was going to lead to such a deep dive and, you know, just realization of, of the benefit. So like we knew it, but once we started looking at it again, we're like, man, this is such a great question because it just opened up this ability to have another conversation about the benefits and another. Yeah. We're like, everybody that. needs to hear this. Right. They, they need it here. Now. Yeah. At least just hear it. So what we, what we want you to do is go to um, wherever you get your podcast, if it's an app, Apple, Spotify, and we want you to give us a review. We prefer to start five star reviews. I'm not going to be shameful. Um, cause I am confident in the value and the information that we're delivering. So, uh, five start up and also, um, drop a question in the review. We want to answer more questions. Um, yeah. we have so many, we like map, I have so many things, you know, when we get on the calls on Tuesdays to prep for the recording, I'm just like, yeah, we can talk about this. We can talk about that. I've got like a whole running list of things and like a general layout of what we're going to be putting in our courses. And then, but the questions really give us, you know, feedback and we want to make sure that we're, you know, talking about things that people are concerned about. Um, but we also want it to be conversational. So for now, um, you know, get on there, leave us a review, drop a question. And if you don't know how to do any of these things, email info at the fasting Right, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And um, Tommy will uh, send you some guidelines. Um, Cause yeah. I'm not, not sure I'd be able yeah, I'll to record a video that. where, where Scott does a tutorial yeah. and we'll, we'll post it for you. Fantastic. Um, so great. Uh, Tommy, anything else to add before we, uh, before we wrap this up? No, that's it. I hope we didn't get uh, too deep into the science for you guys, but, but uh, I hope you followed along and, um, and found some good, good information in there and some actionable stuff. Cause that's what we're looking to bring to you every week. So I'm, I'm really happy that you dropped that pathophysiology document right in my lap right before we hopped on this tonight. So thank you for You're welcome. bringing yep. me back to uh, yeah. Gotta stay sharp. Appreciate that. Um, and then one last thing is I was just thinking here, uh, share this with a family or friend that needs to hear it. Um, I know in my professional life and even in my personal life, in my relationships, um, third party authority is, is, a, posi- is, a, is, a, is a very um, positive thing. So when I was in practice seeing hundreds of patients a week, um, I would get this all the time. Oh, my coworker needs to come here. Oh, my, my mom needs to do this test. Oh, my dad. Mm-hmm. And then they just tell me the struggles of them trying to get them to do something that they don't really understand or don't want to do. Um, yeah. because they're looking at the individual and like, well, you're the crazy one that's doing this fasting thing. Why am I going to do that? Right. You know, or it was, I mean, it could have been any of the nutritional programs or protocols that we did in the clinic or, um, even the physical therapy and rehab and alternative pain relief that we used to do, like people would be like, well, I don't, I'm just going to get a cortisone shot. I'm like, well, they, and the, the patient would get so frustrated. And mm-hmm. then in my personal life, same thing. I just know it's, you know, relationally, it's always great to have that third party input um, to help, you know, friends, family, yeah. <clears throat> pastors, whatever, just to be like, Hey, this is what I see is happening. So maybe this can help you. So share it with somebody that you think may need it. 
Um, I know I finally got my dad's pod phone working so he can listen to these damn things because he, he plays the, I'm old, I'm an old dog and I don't want a new tricks card. I'm like, well, I want you to be here for your great grandkids. So let's get this thing working. So now he's mm -hmm. got it. So he was my one that I like made sure that we finally checked that off the list this week. So we appreciate if you guys would do the same. We love and appreciate you guys. Keep giving us, um, uh, feedback, go to our page, um, just stay up to date. We have some big things coming. And uh, we'll call it a night. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. See ya. So, you've heard today's episode, and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter, where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day -day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.